everybody. Today uh, I want to talk about a recent discovery and donation to Offaly Archives of a map of Philipstown, otherwise Dangan, which was made in 1786. And I also want to acknowledge the support of the Heritage Council, whose funding has allowed us to have this important map conserved. I have other people to thank also, and they are mentioned there on page two of my slides. And one in particular is Parik Siri, to whom I'm much indebted, and also to Maliki Mangan, who is from Casa Barnardangan, who is joining us later in this programme for a chat about parts of the town of Dangan that he is familiar with. So the map itself is uh, a large map, 154 by 128, 20 perches to the inch, and it covers about 3,000 acres of land, statute acres now, and refers to 130 land holdings on the map itself. And the, the map was prepared for the fort Lord Molesworth, whose family owned the town of Phillipstown and district, as I said, about 3,000 acres. And the map was prepared by Arthur Richard Neville, Arthur Richards Neville, I should say, in 1786. That, incidentally, was the same year as the preparation of a map of Tullamore for Charles William Bury, who had come of age in, in 1785 and was having his estate in Offaly mapped. Unfortunately, that map cannot now be located, and it's a great loss, and... This map of, of Phillipstown Dangan is unique in Offaly because we don't have any other town or village so well covered uh, in one large sheet at this early date. Generally, one has to wait until the 1830s or 1840s for good quality estate, uh, town estate maps. So that's the jacket of the map and uh, give you some bearings then for the area for those of you who may be looking at this and are not from Dangan or not familiar with it. This is the one inch map of the district and you can see uh, Phillipstown there to the southwest just above the logo of the society and uh, over to the west then on the map is the town of Tullamore and to the north of Phillipstown is Cron Hill. And to the southwest of it is Balanagar. And this 1838 map gives us an even better picture in that it shows the barony of Lower Phillipstown, one of the 12 baronies in the King's County, and reflecting very much part of the territory of the O'Connors when the county was shired in 1557-60. At least that part of the county. It took some 60 years to to create the entire of the present day administrative county. So Phillipstown there is there coloured in red. And you can see the three civil parishes uh, in the area of Lower Phillipstown. First of all, there's the Killaderry civil parish where Dangan Town is situated. Then to the right of that, there's Kilclownford. You can see Mount Briscoe House up to the north of the name of the of that civil parish, and Mount Lucas uh, further east. And moving across the map, then you can see Ballycommon, the civil parish of Ballycommon, and to the north is the civil parish of Crahan. And then there's a small part of the civil parish of Ballyburley, also included in the barony of Lower Phillipstown. Now, these territorial divisions are important because they relate to the working, say, of the Church of Ireland parishes in the 19th century and also the census figures for 1841 to 1911 usually rely on the civil parish, the townland and, of course, the barony. And the next map will be more familiar to you. I should have said that earlier map is the index map to the 1838 Atlas of the Ordnance Survey, which is the first edition of the Ordnance Survey that was completed at the time. 
and as a that's why the town map of Dangan that we're talking about today is important because it's 50 years prior to the ordnance survey and the maps that emerged from that this map is more familiar to a lot of you it's the lewis atlas from the lewis atlas and it shows upper and lower Phillipstown in one frame here as called it Phillipstown. And then to the west of that is the Barony of Geishel. And then the Omaloi country is to the further west being Ballycown, Ballyboy and English. Twelve baronies in all, but only 11 shown on that map because Phillipstown was mapped as one. I'm just showing some early maps before we get to the 1786 one. This map is by Herman Moll. It's in the late 1690s or mid 1690s. And it shows the old road coming from Eden Derry, Monaster Oris, uh, through Phillipstown, into Geishel, and on to Ballyboy, Eglish, and down to Burr. And that was before there was any road of significance via Phillipstown to Ballinagar into Tullamore. That was the main commercial route in the 1700s. Now, another county map of interest, also published in 1680s, is the Petty map. Sir William Petty's map of the King's County. He prepared an atlas of Ireland, or published it, I should say, in 1685. But it's actually based on survey work to do with the Cromwellian confiscations and further work he did in the um in the 1660s that separate piece there that's shown on the lewis map that we already had you can see it there the parish of harristown uh it was taken off king's county in 1836-7 it's and put back into the county of kildare obviously that was old o'connor family territory and when the county was created in the 1560s, that part of the territory was included in the King's County. The other maps of the Down Survey, or Petty's maps, are the Parish and Barony maps, and there are samples of those here uh, for your information. Generally, the areas that were already Protestant-owned and uh, settled by the col colonists were not mapped because there was no need to map them because they were not going to be confiscated. Hence, there's a lot of grey blank around Coolstown, and particularly so in Geishel, which was already owned by Lord Digby through the family, uh, Lady Fitzgerald, who got it in her own name in 1619. That was after a dispute. And, of course, when the county was first colonised in the Tudor period, you can see the name Dingan there on this map of the 1560s and that related to the provision of a fort inside the territory of the O'Connors in order to subdue them. And a similar exercise was done with the building of the fort at Maryborough or Port Leisha today in the, in the same period. Now moving on then fairly quickly, uh, what was the town like in the period before the map was made and unfortunately it was not good the first surviving description of value was given by general valency when he was employed to write up a brochure or a marketing plan who could call it for the building of the canal to the shannon and of course he was he was there to sell the idea on behalf of the directors of the grand canal company and that in turn was funded by investors and by the state. So he gave glowing descriptions to places as to how they would benefit. But he did comment that the food in Dangan or Phillipstown was expensive and that there was very little commercial activity going on except some hat making and shoe making and that the town suffered from a lot of idlers and beggars. And he went on to describe the value that the navigation would bring to the area, not least being the provision of troops who would spend money and improve the place accordingly. That was what happened in Tullamore when a barracks was built in the town in 1716. Dangan, of course, always had the barracks at this time, 
because it was the county town from the 1550s. Another description comes from Charles Coote's uh, statistical survey done for the Dublin Society in 1801, and he describes the, the area as thickly inhabited and that uh, Dangan was the only town in the barony. And, of course, it sent two members to Parliament from the 1570s when it was created a borough until 1800 with the passing of the Act of Union. He also mentions that the town was originally part of the Molesworth estate and that through family connections it was now divided into three properties of which the most considerable was owned by Mr Ponsonby. Now, for the benefit of Dangan, Ponsonby was giving new leases and, and new houses were building as a result. Now, these leases were probably longer than the Molesworth leases which were generally only 31 years, which would not be long enough if one were to build a house on a relatively short lease. In Tullamore, for example, the leases from the 1740s were f renewable forever so that you got a virtual freehold subject to covenants. And he mentions the, a castle on the bank of the river and that the place was 38 miles uh, from Dublin. That would be Irish miles. Now, what was the population like? Well, we generally don't have any census returns surviving until 1813 with the first census, which is not considered to be very reliable. And there is an earlier census surviving for parts of Ireland known as the religious censuses of 1765-66. And fortunately for us, Comerford in his history of the Diocese of Kildare and Lachlan recorded information that might have been in the National Archive, uh, which was destroyed in 1922. He recorded that in his diocesan history, and that has been reproduced in a recent publication on the religious censuses of the 1760s, which has been edited by Brian Gearin or Gorin and others. And I have an extract there from that new book showing that the parish of Kiladeri, that's the civil parish, had a population of 1492, of which about 84.7% were Catholics, and the balance were Protestant. And ditto then for Kitlongfer, there were 708, and then there was another number of people in the parish of Bally Common, the civil parish, and of course there were some in the parish of Bally Burley, so the overall population might have been 2,800 with a provision for belly burley or perhaps 400. So maybe 3-2 might have been a reasonable estimate in the 1760s. By 1813, in that unreliable census, we are given the figure of 7,700 in Lower Phillipstown. And when we get to the 1841 census we get a much more reliable figure which in fact is similar at 7223 and of course the really interesting thing then is uh, that the population fell substantially to 5320 in 1851 but even more so in the town of Dangan where it fell from 1489 to 748 in the same 10 years that's very high Generally, the population fell by 25% in the different townlands in the county in that 10 years. So perhaps we need to look closer at those figures to see are we talking about the same area or was there any such thing as Phillipstown Commons, which maybe was taken account of in 1841, but not in 1851. But by the way, anyway, it, it does, uh, if the figure is correct, it does bear out the description of Valency and Coote and later uh, Jonathan Binns about the extent of the population and the extent of poverty in the early 19th century. There in the next frame is a picture from Arnold Horner's book on Mapping Offaly where he shows the population is useful for comparative purposes now. It mightn't be quite accurate, the 1821 figure, but it's getting close to accurate. And you can see there that 
Phillipstown had 1,619 people, but allowance has to be made for a place called Phillipstown Commons, which would have been adjoining and which had um, another 312. So maybe 1,900, 1,930 would be the total for the population of Phillipstown, which then exceeded Eden Derry, Clara and Shinrone and Frankfurt and was half of Bor and uh, Tullamore. And moving on then to Binns, uh, a very interesting account of uh, Dangan in the 1830s. You can read the full text online in a reference I've given there, but he he notes the poverty in the town at the time and how the courthouse and the prison were about to be vacated in favour of new buildings in Tullamore mentions the Grand Canal and the fact that there were two passage boats plying daily between Dublin and Shannon Harbour and that at one time Phillipstown sent two members to Parliament. Now what was it like by the 1830s? Well many of its houses were falling into ruins and its shops were failing and the population was poor and wretched. And that view is reflected in the valuation records that are available uh, from the 1830s. Coote himself had remarked that the canal had made only a slight improvement to the town. So moving on to other maps then, these are the Taylor and Skinner road maps of Ireland of the 1770s and you can see there Phillipstown in the lower half of the one on the left and it's on the upper half of the map on the right and um, it mentions some of the big houses being uh, Mount uh, River Lines, uh, Clonerl and uh, Mount Lucas. Now that would be the old Clonerl house because a new one was built in the 1820s and of course River Lines was already a ruin uh, by the 1830s but may have been in use in the 1770s. So the other map then on the right shows the big rectory house at Geishel and also Geishel Castle. These were road maps that were used by travellers, much as one would use uh, Google Maps today. And in Coote's own book of 1801, the survey has a map of the county showing the Grand Canal reaching close enough to Tullamore. It's highlighted in yellow there with the names of the towns that it had already reached. Another more interesting map then that's getting to very accurate is the Larkin map, which was published by Arnold Horner in recent years and which we have for sale here in the society. And again, you can see there the town of Phillipstown and you have uh, to the north of it uh, the lovely estate of Clonerl and to the right Mount Briscoe and beyond that Mount Lucas. And you can see the river lines has no planting, which would suggest that it was probably out of use even at that time. Certainly it was out of use by the 1830s because we have an illustration of it as a ruin. Now these little town or village maps are also from Larkin's work and published by Arnold Horner and they showed the town of Phillipstown in the in 1809 and also uh, the Balnagar, which Balnagar was quite populated with small cabins while Phillipstown had more substantial houses and not very different to what it was like in the 1830s or indeed up to recent years. The houses and ruins then in the 1840s were uh, river lines there on the left and uh, Clonair, that wonderful house, on the right. Now when we get to the, the 1838 to the first ordinance map, you can see here the six inch map showing the entrance to the town from Tullamore with the police barracks and the old Fort Castle, which we'll be mentioning. That was the site of the original fort, first of all of the O'Connors, and then from the 1540s of the New English settlers. And to the north of that, we have the Church of Ireland Church, the, the RC Chapel, the new courthouse of 1807, an old distillery, several Methodist chapels, and to the north again, the schoolhouse, Erasmus Smith School and the Scully Canal House or Canal Office close to the Molesworth Bridge. 
And then on up, we have the barracks, which was later the reformatory. But before that, it was a convict prison in the 1840s and 50s. And then it became a, a reformatory about 1870 after lying idle for 10 years and continued as such for 100 years. And beyond that was Snugborough. And the canal cuts through the um, northern side of the town. And Maliki will be telling us more about that shortly. Uh, so that's the, the, the Molesworth estate then I ought to have mentioned that that was inherited through the marriage of one of the Molesworth family to Judith Biss, who was an only child of John Biss. And that would have passed into the Molesworth family before 1690. Some of the Molesworths then are here. The first Lord Molesworth, Robert, uh, was very fond of Dangan and described it as a Dutch situation in that it would accommodate canals and planting and as far as he was concerned, it was a very attractive place. His gra- his granddaughter, I think it is, Louise Molesworth, is shown on the right there and she was married to a Ponsonby and hence the bulk of the town passed to the Ponsonbys on the death of the fourth Lord Molesworth for whom this map was made. Now coming to the map itself then, I'm just showing you an extract from it now and we have the town of Dangan here with the old fort at Castle Barna which will be mentioned in more detail by Malachy. The mill race uh, jail lane there, I think Malachy has told me it is and also the plots of ground. Every plot is numbered, as you can see, and the names of those who occupied those plots are given in a schedule that comes with the map. This is the schedule itself uh, to the map, and uh, we'll see more of the map uh, with Malachy uh, shortly. The schedule is very good. It has a hundred and... 30 names of tenants or holdings uh, including the barracks and the jail and the old barracks and the fort and turf banks and also interestingly it has descriptions of the good land and the poor land so that um, for those of you who are interested in finding out that the map itself will be available online in the autumn when it's fully conserved and it will be hopefully available to look at in the Offaly archives on an open day in August. It's currently with the conservation people, so my date in August is dependent on the work being completed in time. Just a few pictures then of Dangan itself to give you a feel of the old town. Uh, That, I think, is Brock's there to the left and uh, the nice shop front. And uh, you can see the town itself then was not tarmac had of course, at that stage. And the channels were cobbled for the flow of water. And looking at this map, it would seem that the street was very much laid out by the 1780s, even though Coote refers to new building having been completed. Some of those houses include Sorrow Babel Collins House. That was the post office in her time and also the Ellis's who preceded the Collinses there and nowadays uh, it's the family of Brady's who have it here and beside that uh, south of it I think was the old courthouse and you can see the building there in that snapshot courtesy of John Brady it was a classical style building and that was erected around 1760 and then it was replaced it fell into ruin by the 1840s and the stone, the stone was sold. The reason being that, of course, a new uh, courthouse was built here about uh, 1807, uh, at about the same time as the new courthouse in Burr. And assizes might have been held, that's type of high court and circuit. Assizes were probably held in Phillipstown until the 1830s, when the new county courthouse was opened in Tullamore, and they were also held in Burr. This was the superior courts, and then the quarter sessions were held there. That would be the equivalent of the circuit court until the beginning of the First World War, 
And the district, you will remember, having been there until maybe 2008. Now, the other places of interest in the town then are Kiladeri, which gives its name to the parish, and which has a lovely entrance arch there to the graveyard, and which is, survives in good order. The tombstones have been read and published, and it will be interesting to compare the names of the families in those tombstones with the names that appear on the schedule to the map. The fort was another important building in Dangan. That was built as a fort originally, and then it was remodelled as a house in the 18th century and was occupied maybe until 1850 or 60 and thereafter fell into ruin and was demolished in 1927. Now, there were two date stones there in the wall, which one of them was in the library up to recent years, and there's another uh, with, out with the Mangan family at Castle Barna. And you can see one of those stones is be to the left of the front door in that picture. Unfortunately, the fort doesn't survive in any great condition. It's more foundations now, whereas in Maryborough, Port Leisha, they have much more surviving and they have made a good deal of mileage about it in recent years with a report and only in the last few weeks, the fort festival. That house itself was described by some of the visiting judges. For example, Judge Day in 1811 uh, mentions that Ponsonby had one third of the Molesworth estate and that the judge was of the view that Ponsonby was obliged to entertain the judges and look after them, which was not being done to his satisfaction. Generally, the judges at that time preferred to stay at Charleville outside Tullamore because it was a new house in good order. Other public buildings then are the church, which probably dates to about... 1800 or a little before it and then the Church of Arden Church probably the 1770s it was a ruin by probably 1900 because the Church of Arden population had fallen so much whereas if you recall at the time of the census of 1766 it was about 14% of the total population now all these towns such as Dangan, Borough, Tullamore they all started off as market towns where farmers came into town, sold their animals and their produce, and in return for what they received, they bought goods in the local shops, and that was the way it was done. It wasn't so much a cash economy as or if it was cash, it was all spent in the local town nearest to the farmer's residence. So that was a familiar scene in most towns up to the 1960s. And uh, you can see the way distribution was improving all the time with motorised transport. And Williams is there, had their crates for their mineral waters stacked there on the street. Other shops that came into town at the time were Brock's. William Brock's opened a much needed drapery about 1888. Of course, the other thing now, we said it didn't have a huge benefit for Dangan, but it was significant nonetheless, was the canal. Of course, it has a great benefit today as a walkway and a place of calm and recreation. And that is a map showing the course of the canal uh, from Eden Derry and on into Tuberdaly and to Dangan and Ballycommon. The town in 1970, probably in terms of footprint, not terribly different to the town of 1786 and you can see the canal there to the north and to the northwest is the the old reformatory and all through the main street then uh, you have the courthouse and you have a back street then close to what was a mill lane at one stage so no great changes over the 200 years an aerial view then of the town about the year 2000 showing again the canal waterway heading there from the southeast on the map and heading through and on towards Tullamore with a bigger picture here of the old Barrick Stroke Reformatory of 1800s to 1870s. So just looking at the map then of the town of Dangan in the 1786, 
What I'll do with the map now before Maliki joins us is just to give you a quick run over the map. You can see here the author's name and the patron on the left corner and uh, the townland to the north are Ballyone and Ballymullen and the plots then are all numbered. Uh, the roadways are shown there to Crahan. Uh, so also is the road to Kiladerry and to the cemetery. And you can see the bog there in soft ground shown to the left and other parts of it to the southwest of Castle Barna and um, plots along there to the generally in the southern direction as far as Kilonan Bog. And the adjoining landowners' names are mentioned. Mr. Bury of Clannad is actually Charles William Bury, although I thought Lord Digby on Clannad. And then you have the roadway to Dublin. And to the north, you have the the domain of Clannerl. And to the east, you have Cave Mount. So now I'm going to hand it over to Maliki Mangan to bring you through uh, some of parts of the town that he is familiar with. And I want to thank Maliki in advance. And also to remind you that if you would like to comment on the map, we would like to hear from you at a later stage. And that we will be advertising the availability of a view of the map for August. And if that should be for any reason delayed, we will let you know via social media. So thanks for your attention and thank you, Maliki, for coming in now to join us to discuss further this important map of 1786. And finally, thanks, of course, to the Heritage Council who have funded the restoration of this map so that when we see it again, in a few months, it should look much better than it does at the moment. And it will be housed safely in Offaly archives after maybe a 100 years of neglect. Thank you very much. So we're moving on now, and I particularly want to welcome uh, to our chat today Maliki Mangan of Castle Barna. I remember very well his father, Pat, or better known as Shap Mangan, and his mother, Maureen, and I was often in the house as a youngster collecting local history. And it's very interesting for me, especially, and no doubt for Maliki too, to be back here looking at this 1786 map of the town and district of Dangan. And first of all, I'm going to ask Maliki to focus on his own area of Castle Barna, or Brana, as it's called here and described as being the land of Mr. Gore. This is the plot now at 99 on the map on the eastern side and we're showing it now on the screen as we talk. Hello everybody. I don't think I could ever do Shap justice in talking history or listening history but we'll, I would have a, an interest in it and I hope to learn more and learn a lot more from this lecture of Michael's itself. It's great to have this sort of stuff. Yeah, first of all, I'm quite uh, to call Castle Barna, Castle Brana. I expect this could be a typo on the map. I've never before heard it referred to as Castle Brana, and the name itself, Castle Barna, the Barna, my father always said it referred to, possibly referred to a, a, a gap, being a gap of land leading in through the bog into, into Phillipstown itself, or, or Dangan as we would always call it. So I was born here in um, plot 99. Sorry, not, well, I was born in Eden Derry, but moved here when I was about eight years of age. Um, on map 99, it says there's a fort. But when you zoom in or look closely at 1999, it's sort of a symbol of a windmill. And that's what it was. We, it's known as the, that field was known as the windmill or the wine mill, as we used to call it. And interestingly, the stones that formed the circle as seen on the map, those stones, those cut limestone were moved in the early 90s when Kieran and Chap were changing over to the golf course. So they're actually inside in the recreation area, in the, in the restaurant, or which is the restaurant and bar area of the golf club, which is which is now closed. But that's another that's another story. So the what I find most interesting in 99 and just to the south and slightly southwest of that is that the road is changed. So that the original main road from Dangan to Eaton Derry went straight by the front of the house in Castle Barna. And it doesn't do so anymore because of what happened in the meantime is the canal came along. So the road had to be changed and the road was moved over to what we would call the Mill Road now. And it says on map and in, in part 100, it calls it the Mill Race and it's known as the Mill Road. So the, the road was moved to the other side of the canal because it didn't need to build a bridge. 
and uh, that's that's quite clear when you see on the map that it couldn't go as tight as it is there. It's more or less a straight road down as far as what are called the milestone, which is which is just just straight south of below below it in ninety nine. The road goes straight from there to there. Some point just there it cuts to that point. Is there any sign of that mill left now? And the mill lane, or you mentioned, but no. Is there any remains of the mill? Not that I know of. No. And it's, it's it's also that area there, just uh, straight south of ninety nine as well. It's called uh, the milestone, and that that field is still called the milestone. Ah, very good. And milestone is on the map there. Looking back to the bridge area, the most striking thing for me is seeing here at thirty seven, which is the the barracks, uh, which was to become the reformatory. But Michael will be dealing in considerable more detail, or has done so on that. So down at plot ninety two, which is um, the legend is down, down the down the mill road a bit, or down the Nerry road a bit. But that refers up in the corner of it. Would it's registered as the Reverend Walsh's house, and it's had continued from the years then, and that year of eight seventeen eighty six at the time of the map, right up to the nineteen eighties or so, when it remained the curate's house. Uh, the last two priests to live there were Father Dorn and Father Conlon. And it was subsequently acquired by Joe Quinn. And then he opened a shop in it. And it's now run the same uh, the supermarket by Scully's. So that's the... So And then just beside that, in eight in plot 89, the on the map it says it's a lane. And that's known locally as Jail Lane. But if we look up on the legend of who, what, who owned or what's down for 89, and it says on 89 that it is uh, the jail. So that would be the old jail. So it's the old jail. Yeah, because there was another jail later in eighteen thirty eight map. Yes, which was up beside the the the, the army barracks. Mm. So inter- that's that's now where the library is now, but interestingly, it's still known as Jail Lane. So the name of that lane is Jail Lane, and then on this structure here, so cutting across, if we take the line of where ninety two and ninety one is, at uh, around there. When Dangan was restructured and actually formed into a, a sort of gridded town, the back road travels r- directly parallel to the main street, right down that side there to meet what we now call St Mary's Road, which is down at Plot 81. So the back road cuts right down there. And along on the sort of northwest side of the town, what, what's known as the Boggy Back, there was an, a parallel one, an equal road running from 39 right down to the Derry Gowley Road which is down at roughly at, um, opposite in, in plot 53. So Dangan has three parallel streets. The Boggy Back never was developed. It's uh, There's plans to make it into a sort of a wildlife walk that are, are being hatched at the moment. And the back road, of course, is the back road and there's housing on it. So Harry Mack would live at the corner of the, the back road. So let's continue on down the street and we'll move directly to, where, to what we now call the town hall which is on plot 78, and there is nothing. Which the, the town hall, which is also known as the courthouse, the possibly abandoned building, is in, in plot 78 on the street. Quite a big wide plot, but does not exist, did not exist in the 1786 map. So it's a, it's a fabulous building, as everyone knows, one of Dangan's most striking buildings, and it did operate as a courthouse. Now, before it was a courthouse, the courthouse probably existed where Brady's is, and that's here, and uh, straight across in plot 70. That's That would be the courthouse. The courthouse was there. That's at plot 58. Yeah, in plot 58, yeah, yeah. yeah. but and physically um, kind of across in the seven in 70, in plot 70. Interestingly here, back in plot 76, which is um, ruins of the Church of Ireland graveyard, um, known locally as Bully's Acre, and for various reasons, seemingly that one of the, the schools would have been existed in Plot 78, uh, halfway down Plot 78 before, when, when they were there, and many of the little local disputes would be resolved by fists across in Bully's Acre, probably giving it its name over the years. So that is the, it's, it's a quite there's, there's significant people um, and, and gravestones in there, and it's, it's uh, maintained by under Dangan Development Association as a wildlife plot and walks through it. Not used very much, but I think it will be more integrated in the future. I want to draw the listeners' attention to a huge source of information on all of these areas. So that is, and, and Dangan is a little bit unique and ahead of its time, in that all of this is available to the viewer online. 
either when you're on the street or at home from your computer. So if you go onto YouTube and search for Dangan Heritage Trail, you will find 10 locations ranging from the courthouse to the fort to the canal to the schools that are along here. One source of information on this map and on other inf history of Dangan is, and it's pretty unique to Dangan, is the availability of all of this information on, on, in, on YouTube. Uh, Dangan Development Association uh, commissioned a set of um, 10 segments and videos and various pieces around the town and they're available on YouTube. If you type in Dangan Heritage Trail, all should come up to you and you can click whichever one you're interested in or all of them can be played one after the other. They're also available on, um, if you're walking the streets, each of the locations has a QR code and with your phone you just pick up the QR code and the, the segment relevant to that spot. So if you're in front of the town hall, you go to the QR code at the town hall and there you will get your information in the town hall. That's available at the, at the bridge and at the reformatory, at the Erasmus um, Smith School, at Wesley, which was the former bakery, it was Spallon's House, Daly's on St Mary's Road. So they're, they're dotted around the town. And they will be active very, very soon on all, all again, that information is there. One of the interesting gravestones here is um, a link relationship to Lewis Carroll, the renowned English author. So his ancestors are buried in this graveyard and there's history attached to that, that gravestone too. So from the Canal Bridge area, which is not seen in this map here on the east of plot 38. So if we go right through past the barracks, which is 37, in plot 38, that field is shown, if we check on the legend to this map, it's registered as um, a gravel hole uh, and it's still known as uh, a sand pit because Willie Brennan which has his house kind of across from the slightly just lower than the football field on the other side he built his house on the gravel pit as he would call it so that, that name still exists and um, there are, it's, it's links down south of that then onto the reformatory area which is the barracks here on this here um, Plot 95 is one of the few Gaelic names in the Dangan area called Cool Oak, 95 and 96 would be where the plots, the, the line, the road in between them would be going into Snugborough. And in that area then is the housing estate Cool Oak. About plot 42, which we're going back down the, the north of the west side of the street, is where this Erasmus Smith, maybe 41 or 42 Erasmus Smith School, which... The history of that you will find on the Heritage Trail. I'll leave you to look that one up. The canal cuts through 39. And again, if you go to the, the QR code and you look up um, the, the stocks and chains. So there is um, along the side, just in front of the side of the wall, there quite reasonably close to the bridge is um, a reenactment of what happened in Gallows. But Gallows Hill would be referred to down at the on the west side of 39. And that is an area where, where it's still known as Gallows Hill and associated with um, where there was hangings done from linked, I suppose, when, when it was a prison, when 37, the barracks, was, was a prison. That's known as Gallows Hill, which is immediately on the north bank of the canal on the west side of plot 39. So the canal cuts through 39 and Gallows Hill is somewhere um, almost where, I suppose, 36 or on the south side of where plot 36 is. So it's now on the it's linked quite closely to the barracks in 37. And is there any recollection of that mill race there at Plot 127? Is it any remains of it? Or well, there's, it there's the, I know what remains is of it, but at where at it says 127 there, the, the water supply for the town comes from there. So there's a, a serious well at roughly where 127 is, which is on the, with the canal going through again through 127 or the canal going there just on the south side of the town the main pump house for all of the water to the town uh, it originates in a well just there and that is then pumped to the, the tower which is on the Ballymullen Road up on the south side of plot 11 about where, where on the south side of 11 the, 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 the water tower is there so the water is pumped across the canal up through the Tuberonan and it's that's a high point. It doesn't really show it in the map. We don't show a gradation there, but that's the high point in Dangan, and all of the water flows then by, from a gravitational flow from there to everywhere around. 
including having a lot of masts and stuff on top of it now as well. And just you mentioned Bally Mullen, and then there's the story of Father Mullen and Kiladeri. Yeah. Is that Kiladeri graveyard is shown on this map. Yes, it is shown right here. So if we if we travel out on the road to Crohan, so to get to, to get to it, if we as we leave the town, we come up to beyond twenty four will be the graveyard, and you turn right at just beyond twenty four and travel along. And up in here between plot 20 and 17 is the graveyard, Old Killary Graveyard, which would be plot 18. Not very clearly seen on the map, but that is Old Killary Graveyard. What's interesting here is the road travelled on the side of the graveyard and went straight through north of there to eventually become the Crohan Road. But that road no longer exists. The road does not go by the graveyard anymore. It cuts across the front of it and comes around swings around just at the junction there which is kind of where Dominic Feely would have lived uh, and it extends then to an end showing on it there just in the, to where below the word Glebe is and that road extends straight through and joins up with the one there on plot 16 which is now the Crohan Road so the Glebe or the Glebe as we call it would have a series of houses on it joining up um, just on the right hand side of where the word Glebe is and they're, they're the houses in the Glebe so the famous footballer Tommy Green lives in one of those houses just near the end of it, the, the, the north side of the, that, that little plot there. Even though it's an open plot shown here, but it's, the road cuts along the two. And interestingly, there are a lot of houses there in front of 17 and 18. You know, relatively large number of smaller looking houses. It must have been a place of early settlement associated with the church. And then there are some larger houses there that you can see heading up from the west of plot 20 and 17. And also there's one road I see goes up past 18 and past the cemetery, up to three houses there above uh, the word Glebe. So I suppose all those houses are gone now, are they? Yeah, well, there is a ruin uh, and a big new house built in here. But yes, and they're also a kind of reason, they're quite close to Clannerl, which would be over on the, on the west side of that. Of course, Clannerl would be the lands of the McGanns, the McGann family, so I suppose it wouldn't be, the house wouldn't be shown on this as not part of the estate of Viscount yeah. Molesworth, but the roadways are shown. Yeah, and it would have been a very significant house in the area. And it's a short distance across from there then to the... And I see Cave Mount is shown as well, another... Significant house, Mount Briscoe, yeah. uh, Cave Mount. Mount Briscoe and Cherry Garden should both be there oh, at, yes. that, at that area. Yeah. They're both quite close to each other. And would that milestone have survived, or the 37 milestone there at, at your old house at Casa Barna? Is there any recollection of it? Or Well, have... that that actual milestone, you see, is the other side of the canal. Of course, of course yes. It's on the, and, yeah. and I don't know of the milestone there. There was a number of milestones inserted on the canal, uh, which we would call milestones, but they, they did have the um, all of the figures and the, the the Irish miles in there to Dublin. Yeah. And most of them have been probably stolen at this stage, but yes. there's there's a few of them do exist still. But and of course there, there was one just just um, on the canal quite close to where it says the milestone south of on um, plot ninety nine, and it's it's gone. And of course that's the old road to Dublin. Yeah. Uh, serving both Tullamore and Burr. Valley boy. What's also interesting on this map is the level of bog in the area, and it's uh, interesting. The it's it's in, when you read the legend, it classifies the bogs of how wet and dry they are, and what they're being used for, and what they're in production. And I find that quite interesting with the level of rewetting that we're hearing now. Some of them are suitable for, like the one in Cave Mount, is partly rewetted by Bordemona would own it. And it's partly rewetted. Whereas the ones in the south of the town would be referenced here as Kilone Kilon Bog. Bog. Um, that the wind farm would be occupying that area now. So the wind farm would travel all from there to the west of that out towards Mount Lucas. And it's interesting there, beside Kilone and Bog to the west, there's a line which if you blow it up there, you'll see it refers to Stuart's old line, 1732. 
that's a map that we don't know whether it survives or not, but it's the earlier map of the domain that was available to this surveyor in 1786. Because there's another legend there about Lord Tullamore, formerly Lord Molesworth. It's a piece of ground that was obviously in dispute. And at the time of Stuart's map in 1732, uh, it was referred to as about 100 acres that passed from Molesworth to Lord Tullamore arising from a, a land dispute. So I'm sure there's uh, others who have loads of stories about plots of ground and names of fields. Their opinions should be recorded as well. Because, Well, I'd very much like to thank Maniky for coming into our recording studio at Offaly History Centre today and giving us the local feel and knowledge of places and things connected with D- Dangan and formerly known as Philipstown and earlier known as Dangan and uh, for his elucidation of the place names and uh, points of interest. And we certainly take him up on his reference to the Dangan heritage site and hopefully we'll be able to interview some other people in connection with the detail on this map or when it's online that they will be able to send us in their comments. So thank you very much, Maliki. Thank you.